This video will demonstrate how to run an EEG experiment using the passive caps in room 615. You may already have an experiment ready to run, and this video will describe how to correctly fit an EEG cap on a participant and record data. There are currently two computers in use. The STIM PC, displayed on the monitor inside the booth, is used for stimulus presentation. As your participant does a task, Triggers will be sent from this computer to the EEG PC. This is displayed on the monitors outside the booth and is used to record EEG data using the BrainVision software. Please check where your files should be stored. Note, however, that these computers are not intended for long-term storage and any data collected during an experiment should be moved to your project folder as soon as possible. This USB adapter transmits the experiment triggers to the EEG. It is important that this cable is inserted fully into the USB port, as a loose connection can result in trigger errors such as incorrect numbering. Seat the participant with enough space for you to move around them, and measure around the head to check which size cap you will need. 54, 56 and 58 cm caps are available, and should the participant's head measure as exactly one of these sizes, you should consider trying the next size down. You should make sure that the cap that you are about to use is clean, with no gel left inside any of the electrodes, and that it is completely dry. Do not use the cap if it is wet or damp. We'll put that on your head from behind. There we go. The cap goes on a bit like a swimming cap, so you should stand either in front of the participant or behind them, and lower the cap onto their head. Try and keep the electrodes lined up straight along the head while you do this. Next, you should measure from the nasian, which is between the eyebrows, to the inian, the bump on the back of the skull, and make sure that electrode CZ is at the midpoint of the two. Then, take another measurement across the head from one ear to the other. CZ should also sit at the midpoint of this. Adjust the cap if necessary, however, if the placement of the cap does not allow any space on the forehead, consider either a smaller cap or shift the cap back slightly. It might also be helpful here to get a second opinion on the fit if you're unsure. Once you are happy with the placement of the cap, do up the chin strap so that the cap is secure, and if desired, you can use a chest strap that will help pull the cap down and make it more comfortable for the participant. Next, you need to prepare the skin on the forehead, chin, and behind the left ear, or on the mastoid, to attach loose electrodes. Do this by cleaning with an alcohol wipe. Ensure you've removed any makeup or oil from the area, and be especially careful behind the left ear as this is where the reference electrode will be placed. The electrodes have a thin side and a thick side. Peel a sticky pad off of a sheet and stick onto the thin side of each loose electrode. Then remove the backing and place securely on the forehead, just left of the chin, and behind the ear on the cleaned areas. Be careful not to trap any hair under the reference electrode. You can also ask the participant to hold their ear forward to help you place the electrode correctly. Check with your participant that none of the electrodes are irritating them, as this will prevent them trying to touch them during the experiment. Now you can begin filling the electrodes on the cap with gel. Take a clean syringe and fill with the gel. Try to avoid creating any air bubbles in the syringe. You might want to fill two or three syringes to avoid having to go back and refill. First, place a towel over the participant's shoulders to avoid getting any gel onto their clothes. Once done, gently insert the syringe into an electrode using the tip to part the hair out of the way and help you reach the scalp. Carefully squeeze out some gel while slowly pulling the syringe back out. Your aim is to create a bridge between the electrode and the scalp. There may also be a thinner type of syringe available to use which can be useful if trying to part thick hair. However, if using this, be careful not to accidentally scratch the scalp. You will also need to replace the tip of the syringe every time you use it on a new participant. Once you have filled all of the electrodes with gel, take a cotton bud and distribute the gel around each electrode as shown. The gel is slightly abrasive and will gently scrub the scalp, cleaning dead skin cells out of the way in order to improve the quality of the signal recorded. You should do this for all 67 electrodes in the cap not forgetting those on the face and the reference behind the ear. Make sure to ask the participant if they are experiencing any discomfort during this process. 
It's not normally an issue as long as you aren't applying too much pressure. However, some people have more sensitive scalps than others and it's important to be mindful of this. Try to avoid pulling any hair out of the electrodes as this can cause bridging. This can happen easily if you're twisting the cotton bud on the scalp. To fix this, try to poke the hair back into the cap if possible. However, if any remain outside, try to remove any gel caught on the hair and keep it away from other electrodes. Once you have distributed the gel around all of the electrodes, fill each one back up with gel. Once this is done, you are ready to take the participant through to the booth to begin your task. You should check one more time whether the participant needs anything before being seated. When they are ready, seat them in front of the stim PC monitor. If you have not already done so, change the amplifier battery over to a fully charged one and plug the one you've just removed back in to charge. Take the cord from the cap labelled Amp 1 and the amplifier cord marked with a green sticker. Click the connectors together by matching the arrow markers and gently pushing down evenly on the top until you hear a snap. Do the same for the cords marked Amp 2 and the one with a yellow sticker. Hold these together and tape them down next to the amplifier to keep them out of the way of the participant, making sure that nothing is twisted. Once connected, switch the amplifiers on and check that power is being supplied. Now you need to check the quality of the signal the EEG cap is receiving. Open Brain Vision on the EEG PC and select the middle icon to view the impedance measures. Adjust the scale on the right to spot electrodes with high impedances. All electrodes should be under 50 kilo ohms in order to record EEG data correctly. However, you should be aiming for under 20 kilo ohms and for the reference and ground to be as low as possible. You can check the exact impedance measure of an electrode by hovering the mouse over it. Ideally, you want to see a nice green display of electrodes such as this particularly good example. You can check the reference and ground by selecting as so. Sometimes leaving the gel to settle for a while can improve the impedance measures. And so if you are giving your participant a practice go at the task, it might be a good idea to do this before recording any EEG data. If the participant needs to wear headphones for your task, first make sure that they are clean and then gently place them over the cap onto their ears. This can be a good time to demonstrate the importance of keeping still and relaxed to the participant. Go to the monitor to show the live reading of all of the electrodes. Here you will be able to see if any electrodes are functioning incorrectly, such as here where electrode F2 had a fault. This has since been repaired, but if you spot anything like this, it should be reported in the EEG log. You can use screen viewer software such as VNC to show this feed to the participant. Ask them to frown, blink and clench their jaw so that they can see how sensitive the cap is to the muscles in the face, explaining how they need to stay still and relaxed while they complete the task. You should make sure that they have regular breaks if your task is long so that they can stretch in their seat. This will help them to stay still better when you do need them to concentrate on the task. Your participants will need to complete an eye calibration before doing your experiment. This runs in presentation on Windows and takes about a minute. The participant is asked to blink repeatedly for a few seconds and to look up and down following an icon on the screen as well as left and right. You should record EEG data during this as this will be used in pre-processing later in order to remove eye blinks from trials. Do so by pressing the play button in the monitor and setting a save name and location. You should see the red saving icon at the bottom of the screen. The monitor should show a series of peaks during the blinks and patterns like this for up, down and left, right eye movements. Watch the EEG feed to make sure that they perform the task correctly and that they start blinking when instructed to do so. You should also make sure that they aren't blinking excessively when looking up and down or left and right. If you believe they could have performed the task slightly better, it might be worth repeating the eye calibration as this will only take an extra minute. Once this is done, make sure that your participant understands your task, answering any questions that they may have. Then you are ready to begin recording your experiment. Get everything set up as needed. You may need to change files over or change the frame rate. And if you have a few things to remember, it can be helpful to have a checklist ready to make sure you haven't missed anything. 
Remember that if you have reset the computer at any time to change the operating system, some settings you may have changed, such as the frame rate, may have become reset and you will need to set them again. Once you're ready, begin recording the EEG data in the monitor and ask the participant to start your task. You may be able to use a screen viewer program such as VNC to mirror your participant's screen and keep an eye on where they are in the experiment. Once your participant has finished the experiment, make sure that you press the stop button in Brain Vision to stop recording the data. Then go through and switch the amplifiers off. Unplug the cap from the amplifiers by gently squeezing on either side until they detach. Then ask the participants to come back through into the room. Seat the participant, then gently remove the three loose electrodes by lifting up by the tab. Be careful not to pull any hair if this has gotten stuck to it. If you have used the chest strap, remove this before undoing the chin strap. Gently lift the cap away from the scalp. Facilities are available in the department for the participant to wash the gel out of their hair. Make sure you have some clean towels available. There should be someone in the lab in charge of retrieving clean towels from reception once a week. Give the subject a towel, some shampoo and conditioner, and guide them through to the shower room in the nearby corridor. The gel should wash out easily with shampoo. Once they are done, a hair dryer is available in the EEG room and you should dry out their towel on the radiator before bagging it to be taken away. While they are washing their hair, you can begin cleaning the cap. Make sure a towel is placed below the drying area. This should be replaced every now and then. Gently peel off the sticky pads from the electrodes and dispose of them in the bin. Place the cap in the sink, keeping the cords well out of the way of any water. These must not get wet. Fill the sink with lukewarm water and leave the cap to soak for a few minutes. This will make the gel much easier to remove. After the cap is soaked, you can begin getting the gel out of the electrodes by flattening sections of the cap and pushing water through by moving it back and forth as shown. This will dislodge a large amount of gel without the need for anything abrasive. You should then go back with a cotton bud and gently clean away any gel that may be left, pushing it through to the inside of the cap. Do this for all of the electrodes, not forgetting the reference and ground, then take a soft toothbrush and gently clean the inside of the cap. Empty the sink and rinse the cap with clean water to get rid of any remaining gel. Once cleaned, hang the cap from the drying rack as shown. Spread the cords so that the cap can sit in its proper shape and air dry more easily. Remember not to get the ends of the cords wet. You should log the details of every EEG session, both for yourself and in the lab EEG log. This may be in the form of a physical book kept in the lab, or it may be an online spreadsheet where you can add an entry each time you use the EEG room. This should include details of the size of the cap, who was running the experiment, and if you had any problems such as an electro looking faulty. Make sure you tidy the room after you've used it, putting any cotton buds or paper towels in the bin, washing out any syringes, and cleaning the headphones with a paper towel if they have been used. You should leave the room as you found it. This has been a walkthrough of how to run an EEG experiment. If you have any other questions, someone in the lab with EEG experience should be willing to help. It's also helpful to see this in action by helping one of your peers with an EEG experiment they may be running. Thank you for watching.